When planning a project in FFRAC Studio, it's helpful to break it down into objects representing what we're making, tasks representing the work we're doing, types to categorise our tasks, and statuses representing the approval steps that measure our progress. We can model this in the System Settings page. We'll start with objects. We'll be producing images in this project, and we can see that there's already an object to represent images, so we don't need to create one. As for task types, there's already a look development task type we can use, but I also want to track shooting, so I'll create a type for this, and repeat this step for colour work. I'll move the task types up and down the list to set their priority for sorting. Moving on to statuses, we already have statuses corresponding to not started, in progress, pending review and client approval, but I want to add an additional status corresponding to in-house approval, so I'll create it and map it to the in-progress state. Note how the client approved status is mapped to the done state, as we can only consider the task to be completely done when the client has approved it. Now I'll we'll create a workflow schema to bring all these components together. Creating a new schema gives us the basics, and the red triangle indicates that it hasn't been fully set up. I'll add my image object to the objects list. Next, I'll configure task types. Add the look dev, shoot and colour types, and enable the required statuses for them. Versions represent digital assets in our project, such as reviewable media files, so I'll set statuses for them. I'll set a type and statuses for milestones to complete my workflow setup. Lastly, as an optional step, I'll set up a task template, which will allow me to add a predefined set of tasks. Now our workflow setup is complete, I'll go to the Projects menu, set up a new project with our newly created schema, and set its start and end dates. In the Overview page, I can view the timelines for all of my projects in a calendar view. Here I can create events corresponding to general phases of our project. I'll create events for three days of pre-production, a week of shooting, and two weeks of colour work. Setting a workload estimate for an event enables capacity forecasting. I'll also add a milestone representing the delivery deadline for the project. Double-clicking on our project timeline opens the sidebar, and I can open the project from there. When I go to the project, I'll land on the task page where I can begin planning in detail. The Create button reveals the objects I've enabled in our workflow. I'll create a look development task and name it. Now I'll set the bid representing the task's billable duration. Now I'm ready to schedule the task, so I'll enable the Gantt Schedule view, which is displayed on the right. In the Task Settings view, we can see the Match Bid Duration option is enabled. So when I paint the task in the schedule, it automatically snaps to the bid duration I've defined. Now I'll assign myself to the task. Double-clicking the task reveals the sidebar, where we can inspect it in detail. In the Notes tab, I'll add a briefing note. In the Versions tab, I'll upload a reference image. Versions can be opened in the Review Player, where we can add comments and visual annotations. Back on the Overview page, we can see the big picture, with our evolving project plan in context with other projects. Double-clicking on our Look Development task reveals the sidebar, where we can inspect its properties in detail.